Almost two decades ago, series such as The Sopranos, Six Feet Under or The Wire opened a new era in which the quality of the narration distanced us from the cliché of television as passive and unintelligent entertainment. After those pioneers, many subsequent series were aimed at viewers who were more willing to allow themselves to be cognitively activated by the narrative. Today, they are a cultural phenomenon widely recognized as the most widely consumed and influential narrative formula. The most obvious characteristic of the series is that its stories go on for much longer than those of other media. Their extended length is a very important feature from both a cognitive and emotional point of view. Many times, these are ongoing series. When they are first conceptualized, often it is not known how many seasons they will have, prolonging the narratives ad infinitum. Their arguments are often not close from the beginning. Most of us have had the experience of living with characters for months, or years, or even decades. We create parasocial relationships. Parasocial relationships with fictional characters have aspects of real-world relationships, such as wanting to understand the character and creating a mental model to represent the character's personality. Researchers argue that identifying with a character or developing a parasocial relationship relies on our in uninterrupted attention to the story or an ongoing and active engagement with the narrative. The series makes it possible to represent the complexity of a character through their evolution over time. We have seen their trajectories take new direction as they intersect with events that bring about changes to their personalities. Perhaps our understanding of such evolution, to borrow the terms of this course psychology, could be said to be based on character models that are enriched by their interaction with situation models. We have also had to wait for the resolution of plots for days, or weeks, or even decades. Sometimes a suspenseful situation, instead of throwing out its resolution for a few minutes, can leave us waiting for days, or months, as in the case of a cliffhanger that concludes a whole season. As an example of this, we could point to Hannes Raider's cliffhanger at the end of the first part of the fifth season of Breaking Bad, when he discovers who Heisenberg is thanks to the dedication written in a copy of Whitman Leaves of Grass. And we could even describe the end of the second season of Twin Peaks as a cliffhanger that would finally be resolved 25 years later. Sometimes the suspense is based on a strategy of repetition over episodes, in different seasons until the climax is reached at the end of the series. Surprises in series can also be the product of a long narrative elaboration that makes us believe something for episodes, only to discover it to be untrue farther along the protected narrative. Virtually all series being made today have intricately developed multiplot structures thanks to the extended time they have to tell their stories. This narrative richness does not necessarily mean complexity in the sense of a difficult cognitive experience. In fact, in most cases, it actually facilitates the spectator's cognitive access to the narrative content. It is true that it can serve to create extreme cognitive experiences puzzles with a much greater number of pieces that are scattered throughout the storylines with very ambiguous and constantly changing relationships, or that entail a greater effort on the part of viewers than in a film does, because they need to draw on memory to connect elements that occur much farther apart than they could in a film. Examples of this can be found in series Westworld and Dark, but this happens only in certain cases, and more commonly, the numerous storylines simply facilitate the representation of realities that are rich in cognitive value and the interactions of their multiple protagonists, as we can see in series such as Downton Abbey or Mrs. America. 
How can the interplay between continuity and interruption take place without causing confusion? Indeed, the constant interruptions are mitigated by their relevance, by their timing, and because of the different techniques employed to direct the spectator's attention by means of artfully crafted transitions toward relevant information for the narrative to reactivate cognitive representations. All these elements are more than just tricks designed to enhance the spectator's experience, as they can be developed into systematic strategies that may be used to endow a series with an aesthetic identity, like the use of colors in Game of Thrones, or the systematic marking of beat plot transitions with diegetic and non-diegetic music and sound in Stranger Things. The transitions between plots constitute one of the most constant and important elements in the cognitive game that the variety of plots invites the spectators to play. The simple coexistence of parallel plots prompts spectators to think about the possible relationships between them. When these relationships become explicit, this may often serve to renew viewers' interest or elicit cognitively enriching experiences such as surprise.